Welcome to today's lesson on our probability and statistics course. So today we are going to go through random variable, discrete random variable and the probability mass functions. So let's start. So a random variable is a function that assigns a raw number to each element in the sample space of random experiment. A random variable is denoted by an uppercase letter such as X. In a corresponding lowercase letter such as small x is used to denote a possible value of x. So for instance, we can have a random variable as x where this small x is the value for a random variable. So example, suppose that our experiment consists of thousand three fair cranes. If we let y denote the number of heads that appear, then y is a random variable taking on one of the values 0, 1, 2, 3 with respective probability. So when we have, when it toss three fair cranes, that means that there could be that we have no head. So that's when y is equal to 0 here. We can have just um, one head. We can have just two and we can have three heads. So here our random variable is the y which denote the number of hairs that appear and the zero here are the values that our y can take so here it says a random variable is noted by an uppercase letter such as x and a corresponding lowercase letter such as x is used to denote the possible values of x so here is small x but our small x's are 0 1 2 3 representing the possible values our random variable y can take so that's just what a random variable is i hope you understand Right. So let's go to what a random, a discrete random variable is. So a random variable that can take on at most a countable number of possible values is said to be discrete. In other ways, a real valued function defined on a discrete sample space is called a discrete random variable. So um, you said a random variable x, and this is the value that it takes. So when this value that it takes are fine like they are countably finite for instance when you take something like 0 1 2 3 4 so you can see that these are values that we can count they are discrete they are not continuous so it means if a random variable x takes these values then it makes a random variable x a discrete random variable and if it is not discrete and it's continuous it means the continuous random variable which we'll talk about in our next video. So that's what we just explained. Then we go on to our probability mass function, which is the PMF. So uh, when we have a discrete random variable, then we can, when it obeys certain um, laws or rules, which we are going to state very soon, then it will be a PMF. That's probability mass function. So it says, suppose X is an one dimensional random variable taking at most a countably infinite number of values x1, x2 up to xn. With each possible outcome xi, we associate a number pi with the probability of x equals xi, which the probability of xi, which equals to p of i, is called the probability of xi. And the function p of xi with i equals 1, 2, 3 satisfying these conditions. So as I said, it has to satisfy a condition. So when the conditions are satisfied, then we say it is a PMF. So the condition, the first condition is that the probability of our x i's should always be greater than zero for all i's. So the reason is that probability can never be less than zero. And the second one is when you find the sum, the sum of all your probabilities, you should get one. The sum of all your probabilities should get one. So when this condition is satisfied, then we see our p, our random discrete random variable is a PMF. That's a probability mass function. So in some books, so you find this third rule. So we say the first rule is um, our probability of x i should be greater than or equal to zero for all i. And in some books, you see it as the probability should lie between zero and one. And the second one, we are saying that the sum of all our probabilities should be equal to one and in some case there is a third one we say that our probability so this is small x let me make it small x
So our P of capital X equals Xi is the same as probability of Xi. So when these three conditions are satisfied, then we see that our discrete random variable is a PMF. That's a probability mass function. So let's take some example. So when it is a discrete random variable and it is PMF, then we use this formula here to find for the mean of the random variable and note that the mean is the same as the expectation or the expected value and we use this formula here to find for the variance of our discrete random variable so when we have the variance I mean we can find for the standard deviation because the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance so this is the expectation the expected value or the mean and this is the variance and from the variance you can get a standard deviation so I think there is a question here so the question says if x is a discrete random variable having the probability distribution so we have this probability distribution here as we can see so it says then find probability of capital x less than or equal to 2 so we are supposed to solve this particular um, problem here so let's see how we are going to go about things. So first of all, let's just write our question here and solve it. It's so simple. So we have our x here equals small x. And the probability of x here equals um small x. Here let's take x i. Alright, so this is just from the question, data from the question. We have one, two, three, and we have k. 2k and k and the question is if you find the probability that our x is less than or equal to 2 so you realize that here our x takes three values that's 1 2 3 and each of them have their own probability that's k 2k and k so we are saying that this particular random variable here is discrete and it has a pmf so we should find this probability but before we can find this probability we have to know what the value of k is so then we use the rule for the pmf which says that for something to be a pmf then when you find the sum of our probabilities so you see here we have three different values of n so from i starting from three one to three of our p x of i you should give us one so when you are finding for the sum then you see when we expand it you are going to get p of x1 plus p of x2 plus p of x3 equals 1 but p of x1 is k p of x2 is 2k and p of x3 is k equals 1 so this means you are going to get 4k equal to 1 meaning k is equal to 1 over 4 so that's the value for our k and so since we now have the value for our k that means we can rewrite our table with the two values we have one two three here to realize that k is one over four and this place is two k so two times one over four is one over two and this is also k which is one over four so we realize that this becomes our discrete random variable distribution here so the question is we define probability that x is less than or equal to 2 so x takes values 1 2 and 3 we are supposed to find this probability so that means the probability will be equal to probability of 1 plus probability of 2 because x here takes values which are less than or equal to 2 i hope you get it uh, all right so our probability of capital x less than or equal to 2 will be equal to probability of 1 plus probability of 2 where probability of 1 here is when x is equal to 1 here is 1 over 4 and when x is equal to 2 here is 1 over 2 and when you add this you get 3 over 4 which is the same as 0 0.75 so this is what the question demanded us to do and it is very simple so let's go through the solution here so that we had our k to be 1 over 4 as we've just shown and our probability of s less than or equal to 2 was 3 over 4 which we just showed so in our next video we talk about the continuous random variable 
yeah so that'll be in our next video but i have some question i would like you to try on your own so that you really understand what you've done so this is a question it says the number of phone calls received in an office between 12 noon and 1 o'clock p.m has a probability function given by so this table here so our x takes value from 0 to 6 and these are our probabilities so it says verify that it is a pmf so if it's a pmf we use those conditions we've learned to verify then after that find the probability that there will be three or more calls so thank you very much i'm going to can read now